Hi, this is Jeff Thisted. You may know me from the History Channel's The History of Hot Rods and Muscle Cars. You're listening to Every Car Has a Story with Joe Pep and Dusty. Now, from American Motors comes a new kind of car for the American family. Here is a whole new idea in station wagons. The new answer to today's traffic problems and a complete new idea in luxury travel. Introducing the brilliant 1955 Rambler Cross Country, a new idea car for today's fast-moving, far-traveling family. Here's all the glamour you've always wanted, plus all the luggage room you've always hoped for. And for even more baggage, there's this swanky new idea travel rack on top of the roof. But that's not all. Think of having reclining seats to nap the children, of camping along the way with famous twin travel beds. And if you come to dread today's crowded roads, the new Rambler is a revelation. It's a car that turns in the shortest space of all. A car that parks easily where others dare not try. A car that steps away from traffic with lightning ease. And with all this sparkling performance, you still get up to 30 miles a gallon. And for 1955, this brilliant new Rambler offers all-season air conditioning that cools in summer, heats in winter, and filters fresh air. All for less than you'd pay for a car without this great feature. See and drive the new 1955 Rambler Cross Country at all Nash and Hudson showrooms. Still another reason why American Motors means more for Americans. Hi there, this is Joe Pep from Good afternoon. Boy, it is sure good to be back. And you're listening to Every Car Has a Story. I'm Joe Pep, and with me is my trusty hurricane buddy, Dusty. This show is heard around the world and through the nation and on Facebook Live. Dusty, you're a sight for sore eyes. And it's wonderful to be back. It's wonderful to get through this terrible, terrible hurricane that we had. And boy, I tell you what, we got a great show today, Joe. Great show today, and, uh, you know, special thanks to my buddy Paul. Hello out there, mate. Paul's going to be uh, phoning in in a couple of minutes there. But uh, I'd I just like to say a, a short word here. The uh, All the staff uh, uh, from uh, the Big Talker, i just like to say thank you so much for your, your diligence during the hurricane and spreading the word about oh, I, I tell you they were fantastic they True were news. they were just great 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 gave us lots and lots of update fantastic thanks so much and that wilmington you know we're getting back on our feet we're open for business hey come on down it's a great place for a vacation you know local shop owners they'd love to see you the beaches are open and it's still in the 80 degrees and uh, come on down because we'd love to see you hey the roads are open that's Just right. came down Interstate 40 yesterday. We're ready for business. Don't get don't get ch choked up there. Hey, anybody <laughs> who wants logs, come on down in front of my house. It's a, you can have a starter kit for a Lincoln Log House there. <laughs> but uh, one of the things that uh, I want to talk about is many of the schools and the uh, families in uh, Wilmington they've been hit hard. And uh, what I've heard so far is the Hanover County Schools are looking to reopen for students on Thursday, October 4th. And 10-month uh, staff should be back Tuesday, October uh, 2nd. And flexibility is key. Uh, and, of course, you got to check your local uh, news to see what's actually going on there. I also like to thank, top of the list, 
is our first responders. And they work so hard and putting all the pieces back together again. You know, it's like I grew up in New Jersey. We had hurricanes, lived in Connecticut. We had hurricanes, but I've never been on the front lines, never had to evacuate. But I just like to thank everybody, everybody, uh, you know, the, the local linemen. We had linemen from Texas in front of our house on Saturday. And uh, the tree guys, uh, we had tree guys from Georgia cleaning up for That's us. Great. Uh, the churches, the Red Cross, FEMA, uh, everybody that's out there putting all the pieces back together again. And I like to say thank you so much. So without further ado, it's time to have a car show. Yeah, we're ready. Lots and lots of stuff going on. Hey, yeah, car shows uh, are starting again. 929 Jamming Wheels and Deals, Moore, South Carolina. The third annual Moose Car Show in West Columbia, South Carolina. Uh, here in here in North Carolina, the Vast Car Show in Vast uh, South Carolina, and uh, the show shines uh, sl- uh, shag and dine. You got the S's going in there. That's in Henderson. So the car shows are starting again. Hey, we're coming back to normal, Joe. We're getting there, you know. And and the thing is, is that uh, there was going to be a car show in uh, Wilmington over at the Independence Mall, and right now that's being occupied by FEMA. This is how big of an area that they're taking up but the, you know the thing is is that Wilmington this isn't the first dance uh, Wilmington's been through with hurricanes and uh, we'll be back bigger and better than before and uh, it's great just to be back on the air again would you uh, tell us about our guest today well our guest I'm so glad you said yeah. that there the uh, our first guest calling in from New York City uh, Paul Maloney Great Australian guy, and he's uh, he's with the Cars Car, uh, Car Buyers Association, and he wrote a book, How to Beat the Car Dealer Every Time. Ooh, it's so simple, it's ridiculous. <laughs> and you know what? This this comes at a time. I was telling Paul, I says, this comes at a timely fashion because a lot of people's cars got wrecked because of the hurricane, oh, right. yeah. and now they got to go look for a car. So I think this is a good timing. And then from sunny California, uh, second time coming back there, uh, Debbie Sidra, she'll be back, and uh, she'll be telling us about all of her exciting yeah. concourse events she's oh, gone to, to and, hear that. and all these great cars. And uh, and then we've got a concourse event coming up in November, right? In November, right. Yeah. That's the Trump Charlotte uh, concourse uh, out in Mooresville, North Carolina. I can't wait for that. So stay tuned for that. And... Um, you know, it's one of these things where if you're doing yard work, take a break. Now, people listening in all over Europe and in Australia, uh, again, as you know, we got hit with a very bad hurricane. But we're tough Americans. We're getting back. The car oh, shows yeah. are good. And that's a really good sign. When you start yes. seeing car shows coming back in a place that got devastated, you know we're back on track. A- absolutely. Back back on uh, back online. and. The uh, intro starting today uh, was about station wagons. Do you remember station wagons? No, no, I don't, I don't recall. <laughs> Listen, we wagon. when you were growing up, you didn't you didn't have an SUV or one of these what do they call vans, some kind of van. Thing. No, yeah, we had a station wagon. That's right. how you haul all the kids around. And uh, I've had lots and lots of station wagons. And I think the intro ad was about an AMC station wagon, wasn't it? Right. Yes. Yeah. And uh, as we used to call them, that was a. A grandmom and grandpa car. Oh, really? You know, the well, they had big grand- engines in them. Well, they had big, and yeah, but you know, you had to fight. Like my cousin had a um, uh, cousin's dad, my uncle had a '59 uh, Chevrolet, uh, yeah, uh, station wagon, and you had to fight to get into the back seat <laughs> because then you could make faces at the driver <laughs> right. that's in back of you. But I mean, and these things had fins, and that they oh, were- they were great. Well, you know, interest interesting enough. Um, Station wagons are becoming very collectible today, uh, uh, and and if you're a station wagon guy and uh, you're looking for some collectible station wagons, here's some here's some cars to look out for, Joe. Right. And these these were cars that they only made of a, a hundred to two hundred. These station wagons, very collectible. 1950 DeSoto custom four door station wagon. You find one of those? They only made a hundred of them. Wow. Uh, yeah, 1950 Dodge Coronet Sierra four door station wagon. Only a hundred of them. Well, that's really collectible. Then you get down to the 1915 
1950 Olds for Future Future Matic. What a name! Future Matic. Future Matic. Future Matic 76 Deluxe Station Wagon. Only made 200 of those. And of course, uh, the 1958 Packard. They were going out of business. They only made 150 of those station wagons. So, if you're a station wagon aficionado, there's a good word for you. Start looking for these cars. They're very, very rare. Great, great cars. Love station wagons. What, what I find amazing is, is that years ago, you would never see a station wagon. You would never see a pickup truck at a car show. And I mean, this is, I'm talking That's like true. Uh, the early 70s, 80s. And now you're seeing these station wagons. And uh, what happened was, I can remember, I grew up what, in, you know, in the 70s. So to have a Dodge van or a Chevy van... And then you cut a hole in the side and put the <laughs> the, uh, the moon or the shamrock on the side, and uh, but that was the forerunner of these monstrosities that are out now, the yep. vans and that. Yep. But the station wagon, uh, man, I'll tell you, it's uh, uh, wow. It's Ameri- it's Ameri- Americana. Americana, you yeah. just pack everybody in there, and you had a lot of room. Yeah, going on vacation. Remember the Vista Cruiser? You had the the windows on the top of the station wagon. It's like Right in a Greyhound bus. I love that. Well, the, Vista the, uh, the Oldsmobiles. Oldsmobiles. The Oldsmobiles yeah. had that. I yeah. thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Also, I thought was pretty neat was there was a Chrysler. I can't remember the name, but it was a Chrysler station wagon. It was like late 60s. And uh, we had a neighbor that had, it, it just seemed like a long white one, and it had the fake wood on the side. I thought that was really sharp. <laughs> yeah. you know? the, the, but, that was extra when you put that uh, fake wood on the side. That 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 was the, the high-end station wagon. So... Um, I love them, but uh, I guess no more. Oh, I guess it's uh, kind of time for a Stump Joe. What do you think? Stump Joe question there. So let's see. We got the orchestra. Amy's uh, in the orchestra pit there. So uh, hit me. Hit me. Okay. Got, got to be easy. What, this, well, this, this will be interesting. Okay. What, what edifice built between 1931 and 1936 used so much cement that you could have built a highway from New York to Los Angeles? <laughs> that's a lot of cement. It's a lot of cement. <laughs> and that's and the roads were all built the older highways were right. built with cement. Um I I got an answer, but I don't have an answer, so <laughs> okay. Um, um, I have no clue. This, this hurricane's really scrambled my brain. Um, um, that's a lot of cement. That's a lot of cement there. Uh, was it the world's biggest uh, cement mixer? You could also make margaritas? <laughs> well, I, you know, it's a little bit of a, an American history lesson. It was actually the, uh, the Hoover Dam, which was really originally called the Boulder Dam, uh, which created Lake Mead, uh, was built on the border between uh, Nevada and Arizona. So how about that? Wonder of the world could have could have built a highway all the way from New York to Los Angeles. That much. That's and they say lot. it's still curing. Oh, it's still I, drying. I think you're right. That, There's a that's sign. An amazing it says story. wet cement. It says not finished yet. Not finished yet. <laughs> hey, one thing I wanted to bring to your attention. I saw this uh, the other day on Facebook. So Domino's Pizza is now experimenting with robotic drivers. Ooh. So pizza guys and gals Ooh. need not apply. So what happens is you call in your order, <laughs> yeah, and then a human puts the pizza in the car, and then the car you have to wait for the pizza now, yeah. the guys, the guy or the robot to come up, yeah, and then it <laughs> alerts you that the pizza delivery <laughs> robot is in front of your home. Mm-hmm. You have to go out of your house. Put in a code on the side of the car. Mm-hmm. Looks like an ATM. Yeah. And then, of course, the debit and everything is uh, all checked out. Yeah. And the door opens up, and then this little song plays. Bum, You've got your Domino's pizza. I wish my son was here because and, he could do a really robotic and, and, and voice. And the good news is no tips. <laughs> no tips. <laughs> robots. Right. That was so easy. Yeah. I mean, See, everybody, tips, yeah. everybody's so against uh, robots. It's, uh, it's Well, pathetic. listen, the, the, I'm not against robots. I'm just against electric cars. Okay. So, hey, and here's what's happening. The new uh, chairman of Mercedes-Benz came over from their electric car division. Okay. So the writing is on the wall, Joe. My only concern is that uh, 
where are they going to get all this electricity? You know, you got to plug it in somewhere. Are we going to get a brownout when everybody's charging their cars up overnight? What's well, going I, I, on I here? thought, well, just run down to Home Depot Jeez. and uh, just get a get, long extension oh cord. My, my goodness Well, gracious. talking about extension cords, uh, my good buddy Paul is on the line. Great. And uh, how are you doing there, Paul? G'day, mate. How are you today? Oh, uh, there he is. There he is. See? And you thought we weren't going to be on the air today. Well, me either. <laughs> but anyway. And anyway, hey, this is something you could tell your grandkids about. So, um, Paul, why don't you just introduce yourself to our radio audience and uh, tell us about everything that you do about your your book, how to beat the the car dealers every time. I think this book's coming out at a good timely fashion because a lot of people here in North and New Hanover County and the Carolinas sure. are going to be looking for cars yeah. now. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, wolves out there in sheep's clothing. So um, take it away, kid. Sure, mate. Yeah, no worries. Well, uh, thoughts and prayers for everybody down there. Um, oh, I hope thanks. everybody's doing a bit better and the tide's going out for you. Um, yeah, I mean, it's funny you should say that with the, uh, with the hurricane because when Hurricane Sandy was in back in, uh, I forget, a couple of years back, we had a whole uh, slew of people trying to get uh, their vehicles, and Toyota had gave them relief for hurricane support and everything else towards new vehicles that were pretty much stuck halfway through the lease and they couldn't get out of them. Ooh. That's insane so, because yeah. it's, uh, I mean, first of all, you lose your house, now you lose your car. And you're and, still paying for and it. And you're still paying for something that uh, you don't yeah. really own. Uh, I mean, what do, you, what do you do? I mean, how do you how do? You, well, uh, people people don't realize that you know um you know insurance will cover so much but if you don't have a gap insurance you're still on the hook for the rest of the payment so, yeah that's you know, really important they, gap insurance yes very important when you least expect it it happens but you know if those things happen so i'm going to get on and i'm interested in buying a new car how do i start well what we do we've been doing it for forever i've been a, in the auto industry for over 25 years mm -hmm. mainly as a fleet director selling to corporations and so forth so they don't have to go to the dealerships, and then they come back through us, through right. fleet, and they get it at a discount rate, and we deliver it to them. Right. But also, people that are CEOs working their own businesses want to get their own vehicles for them instead of going to the dealerships and you know paying all the extra fees and whatever. So we said, look, you can come through us. But we decided to step out and create a network that so now we network back with all the clients that we have in their businesses, and we then sell them, um, not sell them, we help them with their uh, clientele that they're looking for because we're such a diverse industry. We, we're connected with just about everybody from your next door neighbor to the to Wall Street and beyond. Yeah. So it's always good to keep uh, the options open there. Wow. The uh, well, Now, we were talking uh, during the week, and um, I don't know if this is something, uh, we were talking about the military. Is there something that you can do for, for our, our service people? Yeah, sure. What a lot of people don't know is fleet. We sell to just about everybody that there is, like from brokers to we call we like to call them in the business telecar marketers, like uh, for instance, um, untruecar.com and car guru cult followers and all those types of things that, that you can name. Um, AAA, Costco, USAA. What they do is they're all brokers that get paid by the dealerships. So we would send them a price list every month and say, here's what the price is, here's your commission. They send them to the uh, to the showroom. They think they're going to get a great price. Right. It never happens. It's just mm -hmm. mean, and they get a commission back for it. So it gets very confusing for people. So when they come to our service and we say, look, just give us your information, we'll check it. It's like, put it this way. It's easier to say it this way. In order to save yourself some money, it's like going and getting your, your, your taxes done. Okay? Yeah. You pay your account. You, you save a little to, you know, save. You pay a little to save a lot, and it's the same way. Mm -hmm. We just check it out before you decide to sign somewhere, and say, look, this is how much you save. This is how much they're offering you, and this is how much more we can save you through fleet. And it could be anywhere from a couple of hundreds, a couple of thousand dollars more. Sure. The good part about it is, though, is that the fee that we charge gets gets given back to them because it's we have to beat that fee by sorry, beat that price by their fee plus some. So it's a really right. Turn and turn in situation, so that it's it's transparent and it's it's also uh, everybody sees what's going on. So there's nothing hidden there anywhere for anybody. So, you know? so so the way it works is if I want to buy a particular car, already got it picked out. We call your company. We I tell you what I want. Tell you what all the accessories are, and then uh, you 
find out what the best deal is because you're a volume buyer. And then for a fee, and I still save money on that particular car, do you locate it or do you buy it directly and ship it to me or do you just send me to that particular dealer? Yeah. No, we we deliver it right. To, if it's in the northeast tri-state area, I mean, we we deliver it right to your house. Otherwise, oh. we have corresponding uh, people that we work with throughout the throughout the nation. Now, do you but, but, do you do also do leasing deals as well as? Yeah, anything, yeah. If they want to go to, if they want to buy it, they want to lease it, oh. they want to pay cash for it, everything but steal it. God, Fantastic. No, we don't want anything stolen. Well, I, I like <laughs> I like that idea. Now, now, how do we get in touch with your company? Well, I just to finish Joe's question there about the book, how did that sort of sure, come about? Sure, yes, go ahead. Brown, yes. Is that for some reason, when people were coming to us, they were coming to us with half the information. And 95% of car buyers out there don't get the right information when they, when they come to us. Not mm. be known to them, they don't know. It's what the car dealers let them out at with. And unfortunately, 95% of car dealers, um, all buyers get taken for one simple reason is, is they don't know the exact selling price of the vehicle. They only know what the payment is. So when you ever see ads on TV, it says payment this, but they never right. know what the selling price. Right, right, right. I decided right. to write that book as a manual because nobody's ever written something like that. It says, here's the questions, put these, in the bo- put these answers in the box. Just simple, yes or no, yes or no. Yes. When you finish, it's like a cheat, it's cheat sheet. Fill it out, send it in, we'll check it out for It's like a report card. Right. And then your accountant would say to you, look, here's how much more we can save, and we're the same way. But with the military and so forth, they're the only people that really get it because they, they love to follow orders. And <laughs> well, yeah. every time we say follow the orders and do it, they, uh, they, do they it. end up saving nine hundred to a thousand dollars more than they would have already got through somebody else. So it's it always pays to check. Look, you're spending a couple of dollars to save a ton of money. So oh, you know, yeah. right, right, yeah. right. Now, Paul, your <laughs> services are in all fifty states, or uh, uh, all forty-eight states. All forty-eight states. Okay. And uh, how about a phone number? Do you have a phone number or a website that they can go to to say it's slow? Because, you know, you have, to have some people that can't hear too good. So. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, the phone number is, is, in, is uh, 1-800-886-1960. And the website is car, like a car you drive, car leasing concierge.com website so okay very good there very good there so um well listen paul we've had you on the air Whoop! i <laughs> hit the microphone there <laughs> you got I'm, him so excited I'm get tra- ready to go out and buy a new car <laughs> i'm a train wreck after this hurricane <laughs> anyway we got you on i'm so glad paul thank you so much uh, again apologies for yesterday but um you know, nothing really runs right after a hurricane. But uh, so glad to have you on. And thank you for telling our audience about your services and about your book. And, uh, again, uh, Paul could be found, uh, Paul Maloney, M-A-L-O-N-E-Y. You could be found on Facebook. Look up his great services on Facebook. Uh, look up his uh, uh, web address. And I'll tell you, if you're in the market for buying a car, this is the man to go to. Yeah. So, Paul, thanks so much there, my friend. Hey, third time's a charm. Glad everybody's okay down there. That's the main thing. That's Thanks right. Me. That's right. Thanks so much. Boy, I'll All tell right. you. The, um, why don't we go into a commercial? Oh, that's into a, a commercial. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Okay. That's a good, good time and to do the, that. Uh, you. Maybe Amy can put up a graphic for uh, Manifest Design. And uh, Manifest Design is at 200 North Front Street in Wilmington, North Carolina. Uh, call our lovely Connie at 910-515-1333. Now, I was at the store on Saturday, and I wish the camera can zoom in, but uh, this is just one of my favorites right here, this race car. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that's a beautiful it's collector It's heavy. Piece. You could really knock somebody's lights out with this if you hit them with them, but it's a beautiful piece of uh how would they say yeah this decor? is de- yeah decor this is actually uh from uh, theodore alexander this is a very very limited edition this uh, this particular piece from theodore alexander uh is listed at 1327 dollars now that's <laughs> i mean that that's a beautiful beautiful collector piece now manifest design and get it for 295 dollars 295 now, come now, on th- th- down. this is a one-of-a-time gift for a guy that has everything 
It's a beautiful, uh, it looks like a 30s racing car. It's a very limited production. But that's Manifest. Now, the thing about Manifest uh, right now is the fact that you Do it quick. You, can, you can't if, do it yet, but, but we're out of time there. So we'll pick up on later, but we'll be back after station identification and uh, people Take listening notes. to the radio. you got some time. You're going to go to 128. Oh, okay. okay. Very so we, we can continue to talk about Manifest. Yes, we can talk about All right. Manifest. Well, well, the big thing is... We're uh, still storm, getting the bugs out, folks. So, you know, bear with uh, us. Here. Storm damage, if your condos, your house have uh, any kind of store as far as furniture, Manifest has North Carolina furniture. It has uh, lifetime warranties on the, uh, on the structure. And uh, now with... Uh, the imports on China becoming very expensive. You can get uh, North Carolina designer furniture cheaper than you can buy it at a uh, outlet furniture store. So go to Manifest Design. Uh, veterans always get a discount. They have incredible, incredible gifts, unusual things, and obviously North Carolina uh, decor and interior design. So if you need new carpets from damage, you need uh, uh, painting, whatever you need, go to Manifest. And if anybody wants to buy this for me, Boy, I'll be your best friend. <laughs> that's a that's a wonderful it's, piece. It's great. It? And, you know, the thing is, uh, we said this at the beginning of the show, Wilmington, North Carolina is open for business. And we just pick up and move the trees, and a lot of the roads are open. So come on down. 95 is open again. Yep. 40, I-40 is open again. All the way so through. Come on down. You know? Support our local uh, North Carolina businesses. They employ people. Um, you, you get uh, your houses redone, your condos redone. Come on downtown. There are all kinds of support people in the stores that uh, can take care of you. And, of course, we want you to come back downtown in Wilmington. Come down to Hell's Kitchen. That's right there, Hell's Kitchen there. And I just want to say, go to hell with Hell's Kitchen there. Hell's Kitchen, a former Dawson Creek film set, is now Wilmington's premier sports pub. 11 HD TVs, a huge projection screen featuring all your favorite sports. But wait, enjoy great food and drink specials with cheering on your favorite team. Bum, 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 bum. Anyway, I just wanted to. <laughs> Hell's Kitchen voted best wings. <laughs> Four years running. How can they run without wings? Anyway, <laughs> featuring a large selection of burgers, pub food, seafood, salads, wraps, and vegan options. Thank God for vegan options there. There's plenty to do at Hell's Kitchen. Monday and Thursday, if there's a hurricane, don't go there. But Monday and Thursday, exercise your cranium with trivia night from Hell's. So, you hungry? Go down to Hell's kitchen and they're on uh, bu- 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 18, 118 princess street in historic wilmington north carolina tell them joe pep and Su- dusty sent you there we'll be back after station identification
broadcasting from Wilmington, North Carolina. We're back bigger than ever. This is Joe Pep, host of Every Car Has a Story. And with me today is my hurricane buddy, Dusty, who um, we're all recouping. We're all getting <laughs> back. You know, it's... Uh, yeah, it's like waking up from a bad dream, but, you know, the lights are back on and... Uh, I keep saying Wilmington they, is open for business. Are the lights the on? The lights are okay. on. Yes, they are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, listen, I'm coming across an article that you gave me about uh, a contractor here in Wilmington. Not no. Wilmington, but North Carolina. North Carolina. I got yeah, to get, get him on the show. Yeah, that, that's great. Anyhow, they, they, they opened up this uh, this old building, and they found a treasure trove of 1930 cars. Wow. Would that be exciting? And the thing is, they're, they're clearing this whole area out. Oh. And this is from Haggerty and. Uh, uh, Haggerty Insurance post on yeah. Facebook, and uh, and I see that uh, it's from uh, from North Carolina, mm -hmm. and uh, says the headline is North Carolina contractor stumbles upon hidden hoard of pre war metal. Why would I like you to know? find something like that? Whoa. <laughs> and the uh, it's one of these things where the the property owner didn't want the cars. So, uh, under the Finders Keeper Act of 1922, uh, this gentleman, let me see, uh, David Mount. If anybody knows David Mount, knock on his door. Tell him Joe Pep and Dusty want to interview Yeah, him. we'd love to talk yeah. about those cars. It's, uh, and he's selling them. He's, he's not giving away. He's selling them. And, uh, again, this is, from, um, this is from the Haggerty Articles. Well, speaking and, of uh, precious metal... Eddie's Hot Rod and Collision just went down there this morning, and uh, boy, he's working on some fabulous, fabulous collector cars. A lot of Corvettes down there, a lot of Mustangs doing total restoration, but he's also doing regular body work. So if you've got a damaged car from the storm, give Eddie a call, 910-833-5473. They're back in business. Uh, the Cobras parked down there, came through beautifully. Golly, that's a gorgeous car. Didn't get car. touched? No, the not storm. touched. That's okay. just fantastic. And we're going to get a picture of that Cobra on the uh, on our website so you can see it because it is for sale and I know that uh, you'll all be interested in taking a look at it. What do you think, Joe? I think it would be a great Christmas gift for yes, anybody who likes Cobras. <laughs> you bet. So um, let's see. It's uh, going on uh, one thirty-two in the afternoon there, and I know Uncle Jesse is probably – Putting the dimes in yeah, the telephone. I can't booth wait to over talk to him. It's been, 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 uh, been too long since we talked to him. Well, we lost two. We lost two shows because of the hurricane, and uh, you know, and uh, of course, you have to have emergency news on. Uh, mm -hmm. But it, it, I'll tell you, it sure is great to be back on the air again, and uh, and making sure that you know families and friends are okay. I was at my uh, local AACA Cape mm -hmm. Fear chapter meeting yep. yesterday. And we had uh, we had a little bit of a light turnout, but it was good to see. Yeah, lot, and, and we're right at the end of the month, and uh, so Cars and Coffee is going to be coming up again. So we're going to get Saturday. down there. Yeah, next Saturday. We want to find out if you folks uh, with the Corvette Car Show that was delayed, please uh, give us a call. Let us know, and that's going to be rescheduled. That's a wonderful outing here in Wilmington yeah. uh, in the fall. So any, any local car shows, give us a call. Uh, Amy's telling us to say everybody who sent me a message on Facebook it's, uh, I just, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so very much for checking in on me, uh, Dusty, and uh, we made it. We're tough. Yeah. We're Americans. We so did let's, let's talk about cars. What's uh, coming up? Okay. I can't wait. Well, Jesse, uh, thanks, yeah. thanks so much, and because uh, we, uh, we have another guest coming on. We'll talk to you next week, okay, my friend? All right. I'll be there, and uh, to you folks, I tip my hat off to you. Okay, oh, you're pal. good buddy. Thanks, Jesse. Take care, there, Uncle Jess. Now, see now, Angel's Angel's Garage. They they have Uncle Jesse, and now he's going to be on Deadwood. So now they great it's like double mint two, great two program. Two great reasons <laughs> to watch these shows. It's one of my favorite. Great, great, great plots. Great stories. Great actors. So uh, check them out in October. Can't wait. Can't wait there. The um, just want to tell Amy we should be having a call coming in from California. So uh, all the way from the other side of the, the left coast there. Well, I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, car radios. You know, we, we take these for granted. It's, it's, a, it's a great story. You know what year that uh, they first put a car radio in a car? Uh, I take a guess. Well, it, well, of course. It, it was Uncle Waldo <laughs> uh, P, uh, Peabody. 
<laughs> uh, had the first car radio in 1921. Well, that's that's pretty close. And, yeah, uh, that, that's for, you know these things were were massive battery operated uh, devices that they put in cars. Actually, 1923, the first one. 23. Yeah, can you imagine that? 1923. So by uh, by 1930, uh, a company called Gavin and Company with 565 dollars started this business, which ended up to be called Motorola. Now, if you grew up in the 50s, if you had a Motorola TV, a Motorola console TV, all the radios were Motorola. Yep. And uh, they came up with this name, which is Motor Victrola. They came and they call it Motorola. Motorola. Now, how as, about that? And as Goggles Pizzano would say, a Motor, Motorola, Motorola. <laughs> what, a, what a great name. And uh, so anyhow, they te technologically, uh, they were making uh, what they call a battery eliminator. Imagine that. And evidently, these original radios were battery operated, and they made this device where you could change from a battery to plug it in the wall in your home. So they called it a battery eliminator. Didn't even know that. So anyhow, that uh, that kind of went by the wayside, and they designed the first uh, car radios that uh, were compact, could run directly off the car's ignition battery system. Right. And the rest is history. Aside from the fact that they also made what they call walkie-talkies. Remember walkie-talkies when we were kids? Yes, yes. They made walkie-talkies in uh, World War II, and, of course, the bane of our existence. In 1930, they came out with police radios. Police radios. <laughs> and that. The, um, no, Amy, Amy's looking at me. And it's so, all right. it, it's almost like charades. Amy gives me this funny-looking <laughs> face, and I'm like, Okay, what does that mean? <laughs> She's laughing hysterically. Uh, <laughs> okay. Don't worry about it. But, here, uh, here. What I was going to say is, remember, remember the old saying is that uh, you can outrun a police car, but you can't outrun a police radio? Right. No, I don't remember <laughs> that. Don't remember no. that. <laughs> no, I don't remember. Well, I never, I'm not that old. I ne yeah, I'm not well, that I, old. listen, well, I, never here, tried I, got, to, I got what? I never tried to outrun a, a police car, but I remember that because... That radio will beat you every time. And while Dusty's dad's car was burning <laughs> on fire, the police radio was, <laughs> Dusty's father's car is burning up again. I have, I have a what? 19, I believe it's a 1940 <clears throat> Feta uh, uh, radio made, really? made out of... Um, Bakelite. Bakelite. Yeah. So it's, it's this real cool orange with red trim. Yeah. And the story has it that the uh, uh, it was bought in Woolworths yeah. for $5. Oh, yeah. That's and then, a lot of money, by the way. That was a lot of money, right? And then uh, my mother-in-law, Mrs. Pep's mom, uh, years ago gave me a 1950 Zenith uh, salesman's portable radio. And it looks like as big as a suitcase. Wow. And when you open it up... Yeah. Uh, you extend the antenna, and yeah. the antenna looks like it could be used for a fishing pole. Yeah. And there was this gray panel that had zenith. Mm -hmm. You unscrew it, and it had suction cups on the back. So if yeah. you're on the train, it was called a travel radio. Huh. And you could put it on the window, and that would act uh, as the antenna. Okay. And it had police. It had uh, AM. Uh, All the ships at sea. You know? And wow. to this day, I could still pick up signals from... Oh, um, sure. From Europe, I can listen to the BBC. Wow! And uh, wow! All the other bands have been discontinued, but oh. uh, I know uh, what, a, what a great uh, radio. A fellow up in Connecticut, and yeah. he repairs old uh, car radios. And so, if you have one, get in touch with me, and I'll put you in touch with them. It's uh, yeah. really great. Well, that remember remember Bakelite. Well, that that's a name from the past. Bakelite. Now, there was some guy experimenting with uh, some chemicals, and it turned into this blob. Bakelite, and they still use it today. Evidently, it's impervious to weather, to heat, to cold. Telephones are made out of it. Well, back in the day where you actually had to have the little dial that you turn into the telephone. Right. It's just amazing stuff. Well, on my Bakelite. desk, I have a 1938 Western Electric telephone. And I swear to God, if you hit somebody over the head with it, oh. it you'd kill them. <laughs> oh, you would. You know? And, uh, I mean, these are the phones that you see, Humphrey Bogart, you know, uh, the Maltese give Falcon. Give me shoe shine seven. I think the Maltese Falcon was made out of Bakelite. Uh, that I wouldn't know. We'll probably have to have Uncle Jesse back on. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, the thing is, is that uh, with all these technologies that are going on, and then it just made life as we know it better. 
you know, it, it's like we grew up in an age of, and show hands, everybody, how many people grew up with metal dashboards and no seatbelts in the car? Yeah, I did. You know? Yeah, and the metal dashboards, they, they used to paint them to make them look like wood. It was quite a, quite a technique that the automotive guys developed. Right, and... The uh, and then as time went on, the that that very hard foam rubber yep. for the dashboards, right, right. you know, uh, that started coming about. And then a lot, you know, you go to the car shows, and you see them, and they're cracking, or the uh, yeah. chunks are falling off of them, yep. and they're very hard to replace. But the, but there are kits that, that that can replace them. And the great stories were um, back in the mid fifties, nineteen fifty five. They got very safety conscious. As a matter of fact. Uh, the scores used to be like uh, football games. How many people were killed on a given holiday? It was like radio people couldn't wait to announce how many people met their maker driving on the highway, which is very bizarre. I don't hear that today. And folks, anyhow, folks, what? do you find that Dusty comes up with these morbid stories all the time? <laughs> It's just in today's it's, news. It's exactly. It's just very sad. But they came up with the first safety steering wheels. Remember those? Remember the, the steering wheels and they were deep dish? Because uh, before that, uh, and Ford did, I think, the first, that the steering wheels were flush. And uh, if you had an accident, boy, that thing, you know, bad news. So the idea was More with bad these, news. Yeah, the deep dish steering wheels was it, you know, kind of oh, impact. It went, it went, yeah, yeah. And then the Ford came up with the first uh, padded dashboards. We talked about this in 55. Uh, Lee Iacocca got all his buddies uh, on stage with the uh, Ford dealers, and they were dropping eggs on these uh, dashboards that they put up there. And, of course, it was a great stunt, except it didn't always work. <laughs> if you broke an eggs up there. So, well, one of the stories from the past, Joe. Okay, now, before the hurricane and everything, we had our buddy on from Montana, Kayla Rain Dancer, yep. and, and she bought a, a brand-new 19, uh, not brand-new, uh, a 62 Ford Thunderbird. Oh. And the steering wheel shifted over to the right. Yeah. So tell me, without being morbid or people dying, <laughs> was it for people that had huge uh, stomachs? Well, or, I, I, uh, I think the, the idea at the time was that uh, Thunderbird was the first personal luxury car. I think that became kind of a, a market niche. And, uh, and, and women, uh, obviously, getting in and out of these, these cars, it's not easy for them. They have skirts. they got to pull the oh, skirts down. Right. And actually what would happen is, uh, the steering wheel would pull on the side so that they weren't encumbered getting into the car. And then later on, they actually developed seats that, that would swiveled. rotate. That swiveled, yeah. Right. And and I think it wasn't so much for the guys. I think it was more for the women, for them for easy uh, entrance and, and, and exit from these automobiles, much, much easier. I mean, if, if you're all dressed up and you're going somewhere and, and you're dressed and you get into a car, then you got to readjust everything. Now, you know, obviously, I'm you've don't worn wear a dress. Clothes, you've you've worn a dress like in a car, so, there, so. Dusty. I know it's not easy, but I think that was probably the idea, a great idea at the time. Well, <clears> the um, I remember seeing a couple of Chryslers mm -hmm. uh, with the swivel seats. Yeah. Uh, also, um, we have a member of our AACA that mm -hmm. has a Chrysler with a. Uh, it's a square steering wheel. It, I mean, it's yeah. not actually square. It has rounded, M more corners. rectangular. But uh, w what I've been told is that it takes a little bit guess getting used to. Mm -hmm. And uh, so do you know anything with the science of, of the square well, steering I, I wheel? Well, I think they were looking for something different. As a matter of fact, my dad had a uh, 1960 uh, Fury, Plymouth Fury convertible, bright red, white convertible top that had one of those steering wheels. And uh, well, that was a gorgeous car, beautiful car. But I, I think that was part of the, the forward look where they were really – starting to work on interior designs at one particular time, and Joe, you can help me out with this. Um, interior, the, the interiors were functional, I mean, it was the materials, and they were comfortable. Then they got women involved. And I think you had been talking to one of the, the pioneers from General Motors who actually was involved in interior automobile design, and it was particularly done for, for the ladies. Isn't that right, Joe? Right, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, talk about design. Well, in December... We're going to have uh, uh, Norman James on. Now, Norman James, he worked under Harley Earl and was developing the concept cars for General Motors. And for all you kids out there that grew up with the space race in the 60s, he designed the lunar module. And, you know, anytime that uh, we have a guest that's going to come on, I always like to talk with them 
and uh, you know introduce myself and talk about Dusty in a positive fashion. <laughs> right. And uh, but what's really great is that what's fantastic about every car has a story is I get to ask them questions that you would never you would never known this. So I guess uh, Norman he designed the Firebird three. Mm -hmm. And this car has these bubble, uh, if you could think of like the Batmobile from the 60s. They're kind of like these... fighter pilot kind of Right, piece. right. Yeah. And uh, I asked him, I said, did General Motors actually think that these cars mm -hmm. were going to be... the Cars of the future. Cars of the future. You know, yeah. this is what they're going to be driving in yeah. 1960. And he said that they wanted to see how far the engineers and the designers could push the envelope uh -huh. with right. with material right. that they had available, say, in 1955. Sure. He says there's no way that you could be driving around on a hot summer day with a canopy uh, yeah. uh, uh, compartment. A, a, a bubble canopy, yeah. very, very hot. Because That's you know right. what? In Wilmington in the summer, you could cook a turkey in this. Yeah. Oh, 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 absolutely. You know, uh, f flying uh, uh, airplanes for the Navy, and uh, sitting on the ground, we always uh, kept the canopies up until we took off and got to, to altitude. It was hot. Didn't have so, air conditioning in those things? Well, um, the uh, the early uh, planes that I flew didn't. Uh, but, you know, it's the uh, adiabatic lapse rate. It's at one degree per 100 feet. So you get up to 1,000, 1,500 feet, cooled off pretty nicely, you know. Oh, I bet. Well, yeah. didn't you find it's like when you had the Red Baron in your target and, uh, you know, that scarf's blowing in your face. I mean, how did you get the scarf well, down? Well, the, the, the thing was that you had to have a silk scarf. And the reason for silk is uh, when you're flying and you're a fighter pilot, you got to have your head on a swivel. You're looking around all the time. And silk is the only material that wouldn't chafe your neck. Oh, There's a reason for that. Got it. Absolutely. Got it. See, now you know something. You, this weekend when you're at your uh, barbecue, Yep. Or, uh, you know, you're at your uh, country club meeting and they'll say, oh, Ronnie, did you know that <laughs> silk scarves don't chafe? So I'll tell you, if I was wearing some of the scarves my parents gave me, man, I'd have, I'd have welts all over the place there. Well, Amy's telling us we have five minutes left. That means uh, time to check the toaster oven, well, make sure the cookies let's, are let's ready. Let's do that very quickly and then we'll talk about next week's guest. One of the things we wanted to talk about, which is kind of near and dear to our heart, are are the performance cars, the power cars, the, 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 the pre-muscle cars. And, and, and I did a little study, Joe. One of the interesting things I found out was that the, the original muscle cars were the, the luxury cars. They were the Cadillacs and they were the, uh, they were the Chryslers. Yes, uh, and, right. And, and, and that's hard to believe today that the, the, the luxury cars would be like, uh, well, Lexus. I don't know. Yeah, Lexus, that had the most horsepower in it. But that, that's how this whole thing started in 1950. Uh, the Cadillac had a 331 overhead cam V8 engine with 160 horsepower. That was the muscle car of the early 50s, and obviously all the way up by uh, 1957, the Chrysler 300s, they were pushing 400 horsepower. But they were Chryslers and Cadillacs. The luxury cars were the muscle cars back then. Well, you know, it's uh, like for me growing up, uh, what you saw on the street of New Brunswick, New Jersey, where I grew up was Cadillacs. Lincolns, um, let's see, what else, big boats out there? Mercury's, yeah. the high-end Mercury's. Yeah, you saw a lot of Olds, beautiful Olds and Buicks. Um, Buick was, to me, was always the stylist leader. I mean, they had the most beautiful cars in the Go 50s. on, You know what? Go on Google and just put in, like, say, Los Angeles Traffic Jam 1950. You can count how many, it was Fords and Chevrolets, mm -hmm. and they were like the working man's car. Um, to have a Mercedes Benz, um, it was very, to tell very, you the very truth, yeah. I didn't get to see Mercedes Benz a lot of them until I moved up to Connecticut. Well, you know, and, um, when my my uh, uncle uh, worked for Studebaker, and uh, this is back in uh, the uh, late fifty, early sixties, and Studebaker uh, had the franchise for bringing in the first Mercedes, the first three hundred SL uh, a Gullwing car. Uh, I saw in South Bend at, at the Sudebaker plant. Um, so they were the ones that really brought Mercedes-Benz into the United States. A little known, uh, and of course today everybody knows about Mercedes, but they were very rare cars back then. Well, even, uh, now I got out of high school in 1973. That's 19, not 18. But the thing was is that the uh, 
uh, Toyota. Mm -hmm. You know, they were just starting to come on the, the and, and they were funny looking cars. Yeah, they were little, then, little you know, boxy looking. And that, and then uh, you know, the cars. college students had Volkswagens. The hippies had Volkswagens, and uh, you would see the Carmen Ghia, which I think is a beautiful. Oh, that was car. a wonderful design. That was actually well, it was a Ghia design. So you know. And I mean, we're only talking uh, what uh, forty-five years ago, and now it's everything you see on the road is pretty much uh, mm -hmm. Japanese, and of course you see your American cars. Yeah. But that's how much everything's changed. Look at a movie from, uh, like, say, The French Connection, and you see all the Great cars, movie. big behemoth machines Great marked cars. on the side of the yeah. street, and uh, you forget how big they were. You know, yeah, it was uh, it was it was a different time. It was a wonderful time in in this country in the 1950s. Uh, the United States uh, economically pretty much dominated the world, and uh, you know we were we were living the dream. And I think we're coming back. They're certainly on the way back now. But uh, automotive history, wonderful, wonderful stories. Anyhow, check out our website. One of uh, everycarsstory.net. You can see all the stories, see all the past programs, see what's coming up. Who's going to come up next week, Jeff? Well, if everything works right and we don't lose electricity or the internet, uh, or if Amy says I'm not going to do this show anymore, Enough we have you guys. We have Tom Cox. Uh, he's oh, on. He's great. Right in my calendar there. Tom Cox uh, should be on. Uh, past uh, two-time president of the. AACA, yeah, and uh, I've been watching his post all summer long, and he's been all over God's creation. So with that, I have to wrap up because Amy's pointing at her watch saying it has to end on time. So this is Joe Pep, Dusty. There I am. This is yep. Dusty. Yep. We'll be back next Thursday on Facebook Live, and of course, people listening to us around the world and through the nation on the radio, that'll be Saturdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So remember, hands at 10 and 2. Happy motoring, everybody.